We are at a transfer station, transfer lounge in Manila, on our way to the uh, gate 117. They supply you with a bus from here to the gate area. Which way? To O? To O. Bye bye. Uh huh. A lot. There we are. Ah, to the exit. Ah, red ribbon. Philippines Airlines. Okay. So, there's the bus. And then I will try to sit in the front. I don't know that I'll get a front seat, but I will try. I guess everybody wants to try. My Ruto. I think I'm gonna get that front seat. I got it. But look at the size of this seat. This guy is like the king. Television up there. This, all of these, um, all the, the airplanes, the buses, they all have this mist that comes out from vents like here. Here's a vent over here, and they all have some kind of air freshener. So everything always smells pretty. But I think if you uh, take one of those air fresheners and grind it up and put it in a malt it might be in a world of doo-doo but in the airplane they actually shoot this water vapor out of the air conditioning ducts and you can see it I don't know if you saw it in one of my last videos but it smells like roses or pine tree it depends on which plane how long but I am absolutely positive whatever chemical they're putting in the water to make the scent from the from the overhead and it shoots from one end of the aircraft all the way from right above your head and also from over the storage racks. And and it's it's smellable for the whole time that the mister is on, which is most of the time when you're on the ground either landing or taking off and also in the air once they settle out and the engines don't have to put so much power when they're climbing but but I would imagine that whatever chemical that is if you just took a one gallon container of it and whacked it up between three or four of your friends I only imagine you'd only do that once so I think that even though they're making the place smell nice, they're killing you in the process. You will be the one, huh? You are the, the king, like King Tut. Okay, these buses are really wide. They're probably, uh, I, I would say they're 10, every bit of 10 foot 6 wide on the outside. Could even be, um, I'd say 10 feet, maybe 11. So, I will. Ah, a smart poster. She's saying it's okay. But that don't mean anything.
probably could get this open like this. Freaking bus with the windows. That's nice. Now this is Manila Airport. And this is a transfer. We're on a transfer bus. Philippines Airline. We're on a transfer bus going to a, a different terminal. It, it's it's almost. It, I would say it's. I would say it's every bit of two two to three kilometers away from where we just landed to the to the transfer terminal. Uh, I've done it several times. I never actually asked the driver how far it is, but it's pretty far. You'll see for yourself. The last two times I came back to Palawan, uh, it was raining so hard it it couldn't make a video. Actually, it was. <laughs> the, <laughs> I don't even want to get into it. I got home and there was a, an inch and a half of water. There was an inch and a half of water in my house because the uh, tile men, instead of putting the floor angled down towards the door, apparently someone read the plans wrong. Someone read the plans wrong and they thought that where the doors were was, uh, was supposed to be the high point. I mean, the hallway and they had it backwards so they made the water one and a half inches they made the floor one and a half inches higher at the door than at the, at the wall side at the, the far end of the living room and it rained so hard that it went through the door it was the wet it blew right through the door what it tripped out was luckily there was really no damage but um I don't really have that much stuff. But it was an interesting conversation. Now that's Manila. That is Manila. Big brown building over here. Been under renovation for almost a year and a half. What it is?
there's the, the, the bus pilot. Far that was every bit of every. How many, how many kilometers is that, amigo? The ha? But how many kilometers from one place to? Estimated. Estimated. Maybe uh, six to eight kilometers. Six to eight kilometers from one terminal to the other. Salamat. <clears throat> okay. Okay. This is. It's almost like a cockpit from the 1950s. Oh, I have to go to gate 117 to Palawan. I'm sorry? I'm going to Palawan, my connecting uh, flight 117. You go upstairs, third floor. Yeah. Third floor. Tul yes. Tulu? Yeah, third floor. Saka, yeah. Hagdan. Uh, Hagdan, Saka, Saka, Tulu. Or no, 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 elevator. Elevator? Yes. No bakakun? Oh! No bakakun? Hindi! Guapo? Guapo? Guapa? Guapa. Oh, thank you. Guapa? Sexy. Guapa. Sexy. And, and, and I am, I am Luang, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, you are bakakun. Bakakun, hindi. Bakakun, sir. Hindi. 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 Bakakun. Deadly. I am Luang, yeah? You're Luang. Uh. Way. Saka, Hagdan, Tulu. Salama. Welcome. Elevator. Ah, elevator. Thank you, Omega. Wow, you don't see that much in the Philippines. Those were monsters. I would be afraid. Okay. I know she said upstairs. The elevator is to oh well, voila. Voila? Uh, elevator. Yeah, that's what it says. She wasn't kidding. Okay. My hop on. Up on. Okay, so this is this is I, I come I come home a different way every time. This is a different station, a different methodology to get from one place to another, different distance. Sometimes we actually leave the airport and then get back in. Go ahead and go. No problem. You, you can, you, no, no, you, you, go, go. Come on, you can hear. Okay. This is a nice high elevator. So every day, every time I come home, it's a different, a different route, different, different bus route. It's amazing. This is a big airport. Too. Tulu? Tulu? Oh, Doha? Are you sure? Going to departure? I'm going to Palawan. What? Palawan, gate 117. Okay, third floor. Third floor, Tulu. Okay. Tulu. Any command, I'll three not 
Here? Yeah. No bakakwan. The li bakakwan. Okay. Okay. Ah. This is a whole different end of the airport. Okay. This place for me is just me. I, I have not even. I live here and I haven't even been in half the places. Amigo, I want to go to Palawan, gate 117. Yeah, boarding pass, can I say boarding pass, Boarding pass. We are at a transfer station, transfer lounge in Manila on our way to the uh, gate 117. They supply you with a bus from here to the gate area. Which way? To O? To O. Bye bye. Uh huh. Allah. There we are. Ah, to the exit. Ah, red ribbon. Philippines Airlines. Okay. So, there's the bus. And then I will try to sit in the front. I don't know that I'll get a front seat, but I will try. I guess everybody. My Ruto. I think I'm going to get that front seat. I got it. But right, look at the size of this seat. This guy is like the king. Television up there. This, all of these, um, all the, the airplanes, the buses, they all have this mist that comes out from vents like here. Here's a vent over here. And they all have some kind of air freshener. So everything always smells pretty. But I think if you uh, take one of those air fresheners and grind it up and put it in a malt, it might be in a world of doo doo. But in the airplane, they actually shoot this water vapor out of the air conditioning ducts. And you can see it. I don't know if you saw it in one of my last videos, but it smells like roses or pine tree. It depends on which plane, how long. But I am absolutely positive whatever chemical they're putting in the water to make the scent from the from the overhead and it shoots from one end of the aircraft all the way from right above your head and also from over the storage racks and and it's it's smellable for the whole time that the mister is on which is most of the time when you're on the ground either landing or taking off and also in the air once they settle out and the engines don't have to put so much power when they're climbing. But, but I would imagine that whatever chemical that is, if you just took a one gallon container of it and whacked it up between three or four of your friends, I only imagine you'd only do that once. So I think that even though they're making the place smell nice, they're killing you in the process. You will be the one, huh? You are the, the king, like King Tut. Okay, these buses are really wide. They're probably, uh, I, I would say they're 10, every bit of 10 foot six wide on the outside. Could even be, um, I'd say 10 feet, maybe 11. Oh, well. 
Ah, a smart poster. She's saying it's okay. But that don't mean anything. get this open like this. Freaking bust with the windows. That's nice. Now this is Manila Airport. And this is a transfer. We're on a transfer bus. Philippines Airline. We're on a transfer bus going to a, a different terminal. It, it's it's almost. It, I would say it's. I would say it's every bit of two two to three kilometers away from where we just landed. To the to the transfer terminal. Uh, I've done it several times. I never actually asked the driver how far it is, but it's pretty far. You'll see for yourself. The last two times. I came back to Palawan. Uh, it was raining so hard it it couldn't make a video. Actually, it was. It was the, <laughs> I don't even want to get into it. I got home and there was a, an inch and a half of water. There was an inch and a half of water in my house because the uh, tile men. Instead of putting the floor angled down towards the door, apparently someone read the plans wrong. Someone read the plans wrong, and they thought that where the doors were was uh, was supposed to be the high point. I mean, the hallway. And they had it backwards, so they made the water one and a half inches. They made the floor one and a half inches higher at the door than at the at the wall side, at the far end of the living room. And it rained so hard that it went through the door. It was the wet it blew right through the door. What it tripped out was luckily that, that was really no damage, but um, I don't really have that much stuff. But it was an interesting conversation. Now that's Manila. That is Manila. Big brown building over here. It's been under renovation for almost a year and a half. I don't know what it is.
is the, the, the bus pilot. Wow, that was every bit of every how many how many kilometers is that amigo the ha huh? but how many kilometers from one place to estimated, estimated? maybe uh, six to eight kilometers six to eight kilometers from one terminal to the other Salamat <clears throat> okay okay this is it's almost like a cockpit from the 1950s. Oh, I have to go to gate 117 to Palawan. I'm sorry. I'm going to Palawan. My connecting yeah. flight 117. You go upstairs, third floor. Yeah. Third floor. Tulu. Yes. Yeah. Third floor. Saka. Yeah. Hagdan. Uh, Hagdan. Saka. Saka Tulu. or no 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 elevator. Elevator? Yes. No bakakun? Oh. No bakakun? Hindi. Hindi. Guapo? Guapo. Guapa? Oh, thank you. Guapa? Sexy. Guapa. Sexy. And I am I am the one, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, you are bakakun. Bakakun hindi. Bakakun, sir. Hindi. 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 Bakakun. Deadly. I am the one, yeah? You're the one. Way, Saka, Hagdan, Tulu, Salama. Welcome, sir. Elevator. Ah, Elevator. Thank you, Omega. Wow, you don't see that much in the Philippines. Those were monsters. I would be afraid. Okay. I know she said upstairs. The elevator is to oh well, voila. Voila? Uh, elevator. Yeah, that's what it says. She wasn't kidding. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit up on. Okay, so this is this is I, I come I come home a different way every time. This is a different station, a different methodology to get from one place to another, different distance. Sometimes we actually leave the airport and then get back in. Go ahead and make up. No problem. You, you can, no, no, you, you, go, go. Come on, you can here. Okay. This is a nice high elevator. So every day, every time I come home, it's a different, a different route, different, different bus route. It's amazing. This is a big airport. Too. Tulu? Tulu? Oh, Doha? Are you sure? Going to departure? I'm going to Palawan. What? Palawan, gate yeah. 117. Okay, right. third floor. Third floor, Tulu. Okay. Tulu. Okay. 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 Okay.
Here? Here? Yeah? Yeah. No bakakon? The <laughs> leave bakakon? Okay. Okay. Ah. This is a whole different end of the airport. Okay. This place for me is. I, I have not even. I live here and I haven't even been in half the places. Amigo, I want to go to Palawan, gate 117. Yeah, boarding pass, please, your boarding pass, sir. Boarding You look like the Al Pacino of the Philippines, yeah? Are you a movie star? Just no. No, acting as a police officer today, no? <laughs> Are you sure? Look at him. Give me a guapo. <laughs> guapo, guapo. Oh, and guapa. guapa. Give me a guapa car. Oh, the hog. Guapa? Guapa, oh my What's God. What's that? It's, um, it's a GoPro Hero 4. And I will, make, I will make video, I make videos for YouTube. I'm not so good, but you will be on YouTube in a few weeks, baby. Oh, there will be um, Manila Airport. Merry Christmas. You want to sing Merry Christmas with me? Almost Christmas, yeah? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish... Come on, come on, come on. Right now, I know you want to do it. Come on, come on, Wapaka. Come on, me and you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Give me five. Thank you. Salamat. You have a nice holiday. Thank you, amigo. Hmm. That was interesting. Very shy lady. Some of the people, you know, you, you get the you get the feel of people. You gotta give them a little eye contact, but not so much. Uh, I have a tendency to, when I look into somebody's eyes, they don't know what's going on. Uh, has more to do with probably being a foreigner and, and the eye contact itself. And that, most of the Filipinos, uh, professionals, know to look you in the eye if they want to know something about you but not necessarily you know eye contact's a whole whole nother story we won't get involved in the psychology of eye contact okay so gate 117 okay so i guess this is just a waiting area find out what time the flight leaves. Uh, service ramp for handicap. Now. <clears throat> Yeah, this airport stuff. Okay. Gate one one seven, boarding time sixteen twenty. So I don't even have a phone with me. I put my phone in my suitcase by mistake. Sixteen twenty. Thirty four twenty. Okay. I don't actually know what time it is. We're gonna go find out what time it is and we're gonna take a walk around.
I know she's making fun of me. I know. I know. I know you're making fun of me. Yeah? You want to buy? No, are you sure? So, can, would you please tell me what time it is? Doha, Solomon. Okay, so we have two hours. They were making fun of my colors, and I don't really care. What I found is, I showed you, I gave you an example of what I found out to be true. Is that when I put something down, I don't see so well, so I misplace it. If it's orange or blue or red, I find it relatively easy. But, but more than that, more than that, uh, you put something down in the airport and, uh, or on a bus or anywhere, and what happens is people pick it up. And I left some stuff on a, on a jeepney and, uh, oh, it was just outside, just south of Sabang a few weeks ago. And I know the jeepney only went four more, the equivalent of four more city blocks, about a half a kilometer. I know it only went, and it turned around. There were only two people on the jeepney and the driver and the, the gentleman who helps you on the jeepney itself. So there were four people on the jeepney and what happened was it was, it was about 5,000 pesos in groceries. Okay, so I left it under the seat. It, it was in a it was in a, a brown bag, it was a green bag with a brown bag over it. I could almost see the jeepney turn turn around. It just, I only lost sight of it for a few seconds. And before it got back, it was on the back one, it was, the, the stuff was gone and no one saw it. So it, it only went 1,800 feet at most. It almost never left my sight. I didn't see anybody get out of the jeepney with my stuff. But if it was orange, it like, maybe if it was in an orange bag instead of a brown bag. I think you get my point. Okay, so let's see. Here's, uh, here are some of the prices. Let's see. The espresso is 65 pesos. Hot coffee is 80 pesos. $2 for a cafe americano. Let's see. I'll just give you the, the prices. Single flavor, $6.50 for a single scoop. Ooh, a Sicilian Sunday. Hot dogs are... Huh? My and hop on amigo. So they have an idea. And and the airport now, thirty-eight pesos for one of these Frankfurters. Now you you have to bear in mind, I don't know what's what type of Frankfurters. Actually the meat I think that the Frankfurters, I, I believe the Frankfurters are much better here in the Philippines than you're going to get off uh, the, than in America. All the food right across the board, doesn't matter what it is, is better in the Philippines. Everything that I could talk about that I have eaten, vegetables, now there are people that are going to say, oh, they, they put chemicals and GMOs in the Philippines too. Well, you know what? If they are, and they probably are, I won't tell you that they're not, but I will tell you is that the food in the Philippines still tastes multitudes better than the food in America. So in America in the 1950s and 60s when I grew up, the food tasted a certain way. And of course they used they used fertilizer. So maybe even in the fertilizer in the 50s, there was GMOs and we just didn't know it by that name. I don't know. 
All I know is that you buy a piece of meat, if I was to stop at a hamburger place, hello, if I was to stop at a hamburger place in, <clears throat> even uh, not necessarily a McDonald's, but any one of these roadside stands and not Angie's. Although Angie's hamburgers, two for 26 cents, 26 pesos, the meat is delicious, except that the meat is, it's like an old, it's like a new White Castle. It's about, it's an eighth of an inch thick. It's about this round. It's on that much bread. But if you just, if they made like a, a, a half a pound of meat and put it on the same size row, it would be delicious meat. It'd be better than anything you could buy in America. So right across the board, the ice cream is better here. The milk is amazing. It's like drinking milk right off Charlie's Farm in upstate New York. So <clears throat> we have two hours to kill. And you know I could talk for two hours. I mean, two, talking for two hours, that's a, that, that's a simple thing to do. But it's in Chinese. It looks like Chinese, it's not Filipino. It probably could be Chinese or could be Korean. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so we, we did the fruit. No, we didn't do the prices for the fruit yet. Let's we'll do, we'll do the fruit prices. Fruity is fresh fruit from Babbitt's Farm. Salted eggs here. Yeah. My my hop on Omega. Oh, look at the size of that escalator. Cheese. That guy on YouTube that likes escalators, he'd have a blast on this one. Except it only goes down. And, and that's what I don't understand why they do this. Whenever there's an escalator, whenever there's a great distance to go from one elevation to the other, whenever there's a great distance, they make the escalator go down instead of up. And wouldn't it make more sense, instead of walking up those stairs, well, I guess because they have the elevators, but I'm going to tell you, the elevators are completely useless at rush hour. You get, you get a Sunday afternoon with, with a rush hour like for the holidays, you could be in front of the elevator for an hour. So the elevator really doesn't really serve any real purpose, really, if you understand what I really mean. So why, why, I don't understand, I mean, with all the money they spend on an airport, why don't they just put a down escalator over here, a staircase, and then an up escalator. This way, if you want to walk for exercise, you could walk and have up and down. Look, that guy wants exercise. He wants a lot. I've walked up. Uh, okay. And they have the ability to change the direction of the escalator. So even when there's nobody on the escalator, they don't change the direction. Even if there's nobody in the airport and there's three flights that land downstairs and everybody has to go upstairs, no. They shut the escalator off so you could walk up the escalator or the stairs, but they won't put the escalator going in the opposite direction. Go figure. Now, look at all this construction. I see cranes. I see one. I'm talking about off in the distance, but I see one, two, three, four. All right, now I'm looking five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
10, 11, up to this yellow, 12, 13, 14, 15. I see 15 total jump cranes. So they're building 15 skyscrapers just in the area around the airport. That's a lot of skyscrapers to be built. I wonder how many steps that is. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Is that 2, 4, 6? 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 17, 17, so 4 times is 734, 68 steps. Ah, there's a clock. You know what? I'm going to shut this video off. We'll do this side of the airport. <laughs> okay, there's over there, there's one. Jump crane, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Just in that, that just in that general area over there, there's fourteen jump cranes that you can just see the top of the booms or or, or the part of the vertical stick, uh, the horizontal. Boom or the vertical jump section. All right. Anyway, this is Michael Fazio. We are we are in the process of a 34-minute. We're going to say goodbye because we're running out of seconds. We have 15 seconds. I want to say this is Merry Christmas from Michael Fazio in the Philippines. Look, they have this really cool Marvel comic thing here for the children, and we have Smart. Because we're not so smart, you know. And God day to everybody from Michael Fazio in the Philippines, baby. That's right. Oive and Shalom.